The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiko Abaka, yesterday won the River State Governor Yusom Wika and his embittered colleague governors in the party against their plot to dump him for a rival presidential candidate, saying any such decision will end their political career. This as the five dissenting governors were selected in Abia State Wednesday to participate in the 2022 edition, edition of the Igbo International Christmas Retreat slated to hold in Omaya, Abia State. Speaking through one of his campaign spokesmen, Senator Dilo Melaya, Tiku affirmed that no envy or blackmail will detract him from his aspiration towards winning the presidency next February. Meanwhile, the five aggrieved governors of the People's Democratic Party have returned to London, the United Kingdom, to finalize their decision on who to back for the presidency in the 2023 general elections. The five governors are Yisum Wiki of River State, Samuel Atom of Benway State, Shehi Makinde of Oyo State, Ifa Nguanyi of Enugu, and Akhil Zekwazo of Abia State. The governors are canvassing for the resignation of BDP National Chairman Iyocha Ayu before joining the campaign for the party's presidential candidate, Atiko Abubaka. I mean, a lot to talk about this morning. Yes. <clears throat> so as we inch closer to February 25, which is the date of the presidential and national assembly elections, the PDB crisis doesn't seem to be waning. Unfortunately, it seems the crisis seems to be deepening as we see reports that they haven't come to a consensus or perhaps a sort of um, agreement as to how to solve this lingering crisis. So as was reported, as you know, Rufai has mentioned, uh, they've said that Sino Senator Dino Melaye, one of the spokespersons of the PDP, had said, and I quote directly from him, Attacking Atiku will cost them their political future. You don't fight a man who has done nothing to provoke you. Atiku's only offense is that he won a presidential primary transparently and openly. No man should play God. Let's look at that statement for a second. So yes, um, I, having won the presidential primaries, which, by the way, the governor of River State, Nyerson Wiki, had contested and lost to um, Atiku Abubaka. And then um, following that, uh, Governor Nyerson Wiki had said, said that, then come up with the fact that they had the party chairman as well as the presidential candidate of the PDP were both from the same geopolitical zone. And in the spirit of fairness, equity, it shouldn't be so. However, the, um, Atiku Abubakar has also come out in, in the past to say that in order to change this, they're going to ha it's a constitutional matter whereby, according to the PDP constitution, if they're going to remove the national chairman, which is Senator Yocha Ayu, they're going to have to then move up the deputy national um, chairman, who also happens to be from the northern geopolitical zone, and then on and on like that. And that in the, with the brevity of time, what they should do is that let us come to an agreement and then following, let's focus on the elections. Post-elections, we can then begin to settle the things, the issues or the matters that they have. Put this side by side that a number of other PDP big wigs, you know, PDP chieftains have called the parties in question, uh, the, the five governors who formed the G5 and then on with the integrity group with other um, party um, um, chieftains have come up to say, that, okay, let's have a conversation. We're hurting the party. We're hurting our election chances if we continue to promote this internal wrang wrangling. Now, beyond Wiki's reason, which is that um, from the same pol geopolitical zone, um, Governor Samuel Otom of Benway State has also said that it's not fair to have two Fulani presidents back to back, citing the example of President Tunisia Gomba Sonjo, who, even in the spirit of fairness, back to marry um, um, Musa Yaradwa instead of James Bori, saying that it was time to move from the south to the, um, to Peter Dilly, my, my apologies, instead of move, to move from the south to the north. And they said in the spirit of fairness, so this is what they've pushed for. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem as if um, the presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, is willing to move, neither are the G5 party members willing to move. Now, in terms of hurting their political future, I believe instead, Senator Dino Melaye should see how the division in these parties would hurt President, the presidential candidate, and the PDP as a whole in the forthcoming elections. What has been said by analysts in the past is that if the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, is seen not to be able to manage the political difference or the differences within members of his party or bring unity in the party, how then can he be trusted to manage um, the nation with the complexities of, uh, of, our, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the feelings of the people in Nigeria? And so these are some of the questions that have come up that 
sort out your party. A party divided, a house divided cannot stand. As long as these internal wranglings continue to distract from the main issue, it, it, the, the confidence in the party and the party's ability to manage conflict comes into question. Indeed, Shay Kinde during their PDP Southwest stakeholders meeting in Ibadan uh, earlier this year in September of this year says, if we want to unify Nigeria, we must unify PDP first. If we want government of national unity, it must reflect in PDP. Unfortunately, it's not currently reflected in the PDP. So, for these governors, the G5 governors, and the presidential candidates, and the chairman of the party, Senator Yocha Ayu, the big question for them is, are they willing to sacrifice the chances of the PDP, because as we said yesterday and from the um, these day reports, uh, um, projections, it's a very close tie. We're looking at going to a runoff election. And so it could be very, you know, the margin is quite close that every single factor matters. It is important. Therefore, the, the, part, the parties involved should ask themselves, would they be willing to sacrifice the PDP's chances at the elections come February and March? on the altar of differences within the party, or should they, for the interest of party, bury the hatchet? And not to forget that they're now saying that they've gone to London to determine the next course of action so that they come out you know, with the United Front as to who is their anointed member, you know, anointed candidate to support towards the presidential election if they do not support their own party um, candidate. As Dr. Bassi often says, it is, and as the reality is, it is anti-party activity. Would they be willing to exit the PDP if they do go on, go ahead to choose another presidential candidate from a separate party. These are questions. Unfortunately, no answers yet. And we'll continue to see this unfold in the coming days. Dr. Bati? Well, what are the issues here? <clears throat> One, the uh, G5 governors, as they are called, the dissenting, aggrieved governors who are members of the People's Democratic Party and the larger group called the Integrity Group, which includes... Uh, party chieftains, including some of the founding fathers of the party, are saying that the irreducible minimum for cooperation and peace and solidarity in the People's Democratic Party is for Senator Yochi Ayu to step down as chairman of the party. What is on the ground is that Dr. Yochi Ayu had already been given a vote of confidence by the uh, party, the Board of Trustees, and other stakeholders within the party. So, Governor Yesum Wiki, who is leading the rebellion, uh, and the integrity group, and the other governors, they are talking about equity, fairness, and justice. And they're saying that if the party does not shift, if Yoshi Ayu does not step down, they're not going to campaign at the presidential level for the People's Democratic Party, and at the same time, they do not intend to leave the party. Now, so the situation now is that these same governors are in London having a, part, a, a meeting to decide who they will support, which presidential candidate they will support in January. And there are speculations that their announcement will be made latest January 5. Well, I don't know why London is so attractive to them. They're going to waste, spend money in London, money that should be put into the Nigerian economy here, yeah. even if it is a bottle of Coca-Cola and a pepper soup that they will take wherever, you know, they choose to meet. But they are taking the, that money to London. But that's by the way. Now, nobody will be surprised if they decide not to back uh, Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of their party, to be consistent with the position that they have taken. Where the dilemma lies is, would they back P2B, or would they back uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinumbu of the APC? If they go either way, and they abandon their own presidential candidate, that will be clearly an anti-party activity. And what will be the position of the Board of Trustees, which has the powers to determine whether a person has gone against the party and should be expelled from the party. But Wiki has said, well, if anybody wants to expel them, they are ready, they are prepared. So in other words, the PDP, whatever decision uh, that uh, the uh, integrity group takes by January, is facing a crisis. It's going to that election with a crisis among the ranks. Would the five governors be influential enough to make any difference? The party does not think so. And hence, Dino Melaye, speaking for 
Atiku Abubakar issued a statement yesterday saying that the political career of those governors will end if they do not uh, support Atiku Abubakar and that we thought without them, uh, the party is going to win the election anyway. Well, I don't know about uh, anybody's political career ending. Uh, people can always reinvent themselves. People can always make other choices. So nobody should predict the destiny uh, of anybody in terms of politics. But the position that has been taken by the party is that the party can and will win the election with or without the G5 governors and the integrity group. This was the position that was articulated yesterday by Senator Dino Milaye, by Kola Ologmodinyo, who even went a step further to say, look, it doesn't matter what the posters or the uh, governors are saying, Atiku will win in more than 24 states uh, and get 25% in more than 24 states. This same statement, uh, similar statement was made by uh, Eddie Olafeso in Ekiti yesterday at the inauguration of the Presidential Campaign Council of the PDP in Ekiti. This same statement was made by Timothy Osadolo, Deputy uh, Youth Leader of the uh, People's Democratic Party, who says that Wiki and members of the G5 are not even in a position to talk about trust or loyalty. This same statement, more or less, was made by the Acting Board of Trustees Chairman, uh, Senator Adolfo Swabara, uh, you know, who was speaking uh, somewhere also in the East yesterday during the inauguration of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. So what's, what would be a major surprise would be if the G5 governors endorse Atiku Abubakar and they say they've reconsidered their position. That would be the big surprise. The alternative would not be surprising at all. However, Chief Olabode George, the leader of the party in the uh, Southwest and in Lagos State, has responded to the possibility that Atiku and uh, the party say, well, the integrity group, they can do whatever they like, the party will move ahead. Chief Olabode just says, well, he hopes that uh, Waziri Atiku Abubakar remembers how the party was established and that he wishes him luck if he thinks that he can win election without the G5 governors and the integrity group. And that, you know, even if he wins, it's not a problem. He's speaking for himself. We'll just, uh, you know, go back to his house. But in any case, in all of this, you know, it doesn't make the People's Democratic Party look good. But you can also say that Wiki and Co, they may just be grandstanding, thinking that they can determine the outcome of the election. The outcome of that election, whichever way it goes, it will be determined by the people of Nigeria, the electorate. And presidential candidates should put their faith in those presidential, uh, in, the, in the electorate. And all these messages we keep getting, some people saying they will determine who will be the president of Nigeria, whether it is G G5 or his uh, chief uh, Ato Eze, uh, uh, putting down uh, uh, Peter B's ambition. The people must get their PVC. When you have a permanent voter's card, you, the electorate, should take the power to determine who becomes president. And it's only if you have your PVC and you come out on election day that you can create this situation, uh, prevent this situation, whereby some people think that they have the power to determine who the next president should be. No individual or one group should wield such power over how many voters? 95 million registered million voters. voters. You see, <clears throat> when I look at what is happening, I laugh at both parts, the G5 governors and the PDP. When politicians try to talk about fairness, it's akin to Lawrence Nomaji Akwanini leading an anti-robbery squad. We both know what, we all know what has happened in the PDP. It is a struggle for power. One group did outdo the other. Mr. Wiki had been spending on the party all this while. Then he saw a bigger power in Mr. Atiku and muscled in out in the presidential race. And now he feels this gruntled. Nigerians, shine your eye. It's a power play between two top gladiators. It is not your fight. They will settle when their interests align. Mr. Wiki thought he owned the structure of the PDP before. But Mr. Atiku wrestled him out. And he feels this gruntled. So when they try to put you in their fight, remember it's about these two people. 
And the earlier you remember that, the better it is for all of us. So when they talk fairness, yes, there's an element of fairness in the argument. If it goes not, it should come south. That's the balancing. But it's these same politicians that today they will tell us that there must be religious balancing, geographical balancing, and tomorrow they will see another thing because it's about their interest. And that's why if you are wise enough, the best way you can break their back is to vote. Get your PVC. Be smart. Concerning the man that said another man's political career will end. <laughs> I laugh. Mr. Vincent Ogula for once said PDP will rule for the next 60 years in this country. The PDP didn't live to see the next election cycle. What does that teach you? No man is anybody's God. Didn't they say Mr. Timmy Priest's silver political career was over at a point when he left the governorship in Bayasa State? Is that not the same Mr. Timmy Priest Silva that is Minister for Petroleum Resources now? Minister, no of State. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. So that's to show you that no man is any man's God. No man can determine anybody's political career. Don't let politicians deceive you. Shine your eye. Labour Party has appointed Akin Oshutoku as the new presidential campaign director general. He replaces Don Yokupe, who resigned from the post after he was convicted for violating Money Laundry Act. National chairman of the party, Julius Abure, announced his appointment in Abuja. Prior to an appointment, Oshutoku had been the former managing director of the new JZG of Nigeria's party zonal coordinator, South. He also served as political advisor to former President Oluchua Gwebasundra as well as director of presidential campaign of the People's Democratic Party in 2011. He is the most senior uh, officer in the campaign council after Doye Uku. And so all of these variables were put into consideration before we inevitably arrived at this conclusion. We believe that he has the capacity, he has the competence to join us in this campaign and be able to drive this campaign to success. Now, campaign strategy has not changed. It remains the same thing. Trying to say a new Nigeria is possible. We can build a new Nigeria. We can build a new Nigeria where Nigerians are happy, where Nigerians have a means of livelihood and live in their nation. Hopefully, that things will get better because hope is what drives every process. To I am. Yes, congratulations, Balogun Professor Akin Oshutoku. Um, Rufai, you've already talked about his uh, pedigree. He said, I, I have political activism and politics in my blood. Mm -hmm. and, and fair enough, because his dad, uh, the chief Odola uh, Oshutoku, was a minister in the First Republic uh, from 1955 to 1966. So he's grown up you know, from a pedigree of politics. And he himself, prior to, to being in politics, had been in media, he'd worked with The Guardian, he'd um, also, as you, as you mentioned, Rufai, been the managing director of the news agency of Nigeria. And only in August of this year, defected from the PDP to the Labour Party. And obviously, because of his, uh, his, his track record, his pedigree, was made the leader of the Southwest. And consequently, now that uh, Mr. Donyo Kupe has had to step aside in a, in a move that many people praised as being, um, dig as being dignified and the new face of politics, perhaps, in Nigeria. We've seen now that um, um, Mr. Aki Aki Balogun Akio Shitokun is now the director of the Labour Party's presidential campaign. He has his work cut out for him, as, and in the coming days, we'll begin to see that. It's a very short time towards elections, but of course, we know that when it comes to elections, every second, every minute, every day matters. He has, in, in terms of deepening the influence of the Labour Party. Thus far, in terms of the work that Mr. Dunyo Kupe did, a number of people have praised his efforts in terms of the perception of the Labour Party by the electorate. They've seen popularity, especially amongst young people, and they've been able to maintain maintain that in the last few um, days and months. It is now for um, Mr. Shizoku to, Balogun, Shizoku to, to build on that work and to ensure that they continue 
to uh, deepen as well the influence. The only, only other thing I'll mention is uh, perhaps does this then mean that it is speaking louder that the former president, Ulisha Mwabasonjo, is going to stand with the Labour uh, Party presidential Dr. candidate? Okay, I think uh, Mr. Peter Obi could not have made a better choice. From the point of view of strategy, Oshintokun is a good choice. Oshintokun is uh, a tested war horse. Uh, he was director general of the uh, 2011 presidential campaign of the People's Democratic Party. And at that time, uh, Dunyo Kupe, whom is succeeding, was in the PDP. Peter Obi himself was in the PDP. Uh, but, you know, in terms of experience also, he has had significant experience uh, managing political processes and also institutions. He was managing director of the Odua Printing uh, Press uh, in Ibadan at the time. He was also managing director of the News Agency of Nigeria. He's been a political advisor to uh, President Olusegun uh, Obasanjo. As you pointed out, he's been, uh, you know, in many other uh, battles, political battles. On top of it is Balogun for Kemesi. The Balogun is the war commander for a community. So Oshintoku agreeing to go to war uh, on behalf of uh, P2B, uh, you know, is understandable. Beyond all of this, uh, he brings to it very solid education, very solid experience and capacity to network. Why it's also strategic is that he, he had been the coordinator for the Peter Obi campaign in the South. So what Peter Obi has done is to replace one Yoruba man with another Yoruba man as a way of also deepening his influence and reach uh, within the uh, Southwest. So that's strategic. It will have been odd if you are taking a, you know, a director general from another zone. So that's consistent. Now, on top of all of this, well, Oshutoku himself uh, knows that uh, you know, politics is a tough game. He writes on it every week. He's a political scientist, uh, by the way, by training from the University of Lagos. So, and he has had the opportunity to put his ideas into practice. And for those who may be criticizing him, he's one of those Yoruba leaders who insist that power must come to the South and that it is a turn of Igbos. So the decision to accept the appointment is also an ideological one. It's also one in terms of principle. I've had the opportunity to discuss this with him many times, but he says, no, it's a matter of principle. The presidency must come to the South and it must go to the East if we all believe in the idea of fairness, equity, and justice. So, Oshutoku, you've taken this ideological choice. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very sure that we're putting your best. We wish you well. Congratulations. I mean, what else can I say? Uh, than congratulations to him. And in the words of uh, Taishola Arani, I say, may your road be rough, sir. Because uh, if your road is not rough in life, you will not be able to make appreciable gains in anything you venture into. May your road be very rough at this time. But one thing is certain, that he's going to bring a lot of experience, strategy, forthright thinking, clarity of thought, and intellectual dexterity to the campaign. If you read his back page, you will know that this man has a lot of clarity of thoughts and he has stability as regards conviction, which is a rare trait in this our political time. Most of our politicians are very unstable in their conviction. In fact, I call it a conviction of called anywhere beleficism. As long as the best money comes to the best pocket, the conviction will change. It is conviction of pounds and dollar that they know. And that is what has heralded our political scene. But uh, Mr. Akinyoshitoku is somebody that has been steady in his conviction. And that makes Ketty man. You hardly see men that are steady in their conviction, especially in the day and age where the dollarization of the Nigerian economy, quick gains from government, has eroded the thinking and the cerebral faculty of a lot of people. The phenomenon of called Asha Adyong has eroded the thinking faculty of people, and they don't think straight any longer. So we'll keep looking, and uh, we'll keep inquiring. And uh, one thing I can tell him for free, Mr. Shutogun, anytime you get out here, we'll interrogate you. 
We will interrogate you steadily and objectively because now you are in the arena. But may your road be rough.